Let's take a look quickly. Daniel chapter 7, their final verses tonight, verse 23 to 27. This Roman Empire continues on through today. And I want you to see this specifically. It becomes the fourth beast. Daniel has a vision of four beasts. Verse 23, we see he's going to be talking about the fourth beast now. This is the Roman Empire. It's the revived Roman Empire. It comes alive, folks. It's just been laid aside for a short period of time. Well, for many years as well. But now it's coming alive. And I think it's going to come alive right after the Ezekiel War. Verse 23, thus he said the fourth beast will be a fourth kingdom on the earth, which will be different from all other kingdoms, and it will devour the whole earth and tread it down and crush it. This is what the Roman Empire did, devoured the earth. Now take a look at this very carefully, verse 24. This is a key in our understanding. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom, ten kings will arise. The ten horns on that beast... Out of this kingdom, out of the revived Roman Empire, ten kings are going to come about. So what happens, folks? The order is very specific here. First, we have the revived Roman Empire to take over the world. And then out of this kingdom, ten kings will arise. That means the world is going to be broken up into ten kingdoms from that revived Roman Empire. So first what happens, you know, on that chart, first what happens is the one world government, then some time after that, it's broken up, the one world is broken up into ten kingdoms. Now you can get on the internet, check this out, just type in the words ten kingdoms, and you'll see maps made up of the world that have already broken up the world into ten kingdoms. And actually, the UN, a long time ago, many years ago, commissioned an organization to actually break up the world into ten kingdoms. Our kingdom here in the United States is paired with Canada and Mexico. That's one kingdom. Russia, China over there, they have their own kingdoms. There's going to be ten kingdoms. And they've already done it. It's already been partitioned. It's all set up already for this to happen, folks. So you can check that out on the internet. Go to the Ten Kingdoms and you'll see many, many different kinds of maps. Okay, now, so out of this kingdom, ten kings will arise and another will arise after them. And he will be different from the previous ones and will subdue three kings. Now this king is the anti-Messiah. He arises after the ten kingdoms are set in place. And what does he do? He fights against three of those kingdoms. This happens in the first half of the tribulation period. And he obviously wins those wars. And then all the rest of the kingdoms, the rest of the seven kingdoms, will then submit to him. And he becomes the king of the world over all of those kingdoms. And he then sets up Ten kings in those kingdoms that will all submit to him. Okay, now verse 25, and this is what the anti-Messiah is going to do. And he will speak out against the Most High and wear down the saints of the Holy Ones of the Highest One. And he will intend to make alterations in times and in law. And they will be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. So anti-Messiah is going to speak out against the Most High God. That's the God of Israel, right? The God of the universe. He's going to wear down the holy ones of the highest one. That means in the second half of the tribulation period, he is going to go after all the Jewish people and try to kill them all. And the Gentile believers as well. And all the Jewish believers as well. He's going to try and kill them all. And he's also going to intend to make alterations in times and in law. At mid-trib, he stops the sacrifices, the animal sacrifices in the temple. And they will be given into his hand, the holy ones in that second half of the tribulation period, Jacob's trouble. They're going to be given into his hand. That means he's going to be able to be successful. The Bible says he's going to actually kill two-thirds of the Jewish people in the land. And for that time, times, and half a time, that's for three and a half years. That is the second half of the tribulation period. 
Verse 26, but the court will sit for judgment and his dominion will be taken away, annihilated and destroyed forever. So that's the good news at the end of tribulation. He's going to be wiped out himself. Then finally, verse 27, the sovereignty, the dominion and the greatness of all the kingdoms of the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints or the holy ones of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all the dominions will serve and obey him. This is talking about Yeshua HaMashiach. This is Jesus. When he comes in the second coming, he wipes out the enemies of the Jewish people, wipes out all the evil ones, the anti-Messiah himself, and sets up his kingdom. And he will rule forever, but specifically he'll rule for a thousand years in that messianic kingdom. Amen? Amen. This is Israel and Prophecy Part 1, folks. We've covered Israel today, what's going on there, and the hatred towards Israel. And that God is working behind the scenes, working to bring Israel back to the land so he can judge and save and then properly restore them back to the land. And he's going to use the anti-Messiah and use all those evil people that are going to attack Israel in that time as well. And, and then we'll see the Ezekiel War. And Russia and Iran... Any time now, attacking Israel, going into the land, killing many Jewish people, no doubt, but going in for the spoils. And then, after that, I see the one world order coming about. The revived Roman Empire coming back alive, becoming that one world order, and then breaking off into Ten kingdoms. And then after that, we'll see in the tribulation period, the anti-Messiah warring against three of those nations and then forcing the rest to submit to him because he wants to be the God of this world. He wants to be the God of the universe. He's trying to foil God's plans here for Israel and the Jewish people. That's why he continues to fight and to annihilate and to kill Jewish people for the last thousands and thousands of years. He's trying to foil God's plans for the Jewish people. And if he can foil God's plans, well, then he can say he's greater than God. But we know that's never going to happen, right? Because the Bible says the Jewish people will live on forever. They will never die. They can never be wiped out. And God's going to bless them, bring them into that kingdom, and then for eternity bless the Jewish people. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you, thank you, and praise you, give you the glory and the honor that you so deserve. We thank you for your word, which is your truth, Lord. We're sorry to see this future that's going to be all about violence and trying to kill Jewish people, Lord. But we're thankful for you, Lord, that you're coming to the Jewish people's defense. And so we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for you to continue to watch over Israel today. Our prayers can't change what's going to happen in the future, but Lord, we pray that you will help save the Jewish people before these things happen. Help them to see the light of Yeshua. Help them to be saved and help them to get their names written in the book of life. And Lord, help us to live our lives in godly ways, Lord, knowing what the future foretells knowing what your scripture says is going to happen. Help us to live our lives today focused on Yeshua, Lord, performing good deeds, glorifying thy name. Fill us with your Ruach Kadesh, Lord, to do your will, to do it in your power. We don't have a lot of time left, Lord, so help us to spread this good news of Yeshua Jesus to the world, not only to the Jewish people, but to all people, Lord. Wherever we go, help us to be that light. And Lord, we just pray again for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of Israel. Please watch over them, protect them, Lord, for the enemies. For there are many, and they are attacking. 
And so we pray you'll foil their plans, Lord. Bring that peace in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.